Uh, if you haven't seen Pirates of the Caribbean, oh well. Okay. Okay. And welcome. Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Hallelujah. Your, your home church, and if you don't have a good place to go, then you need to come out here and uh, visit with us and be a part of what God's doing out here at Expedition Church as we are reaching our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we are glad to have you tonight uh, here live on Facebook, and we trust you'll be blessed and minister to and uh, as we continue with the Word of God. We are going to dive back into and uh, connect to our teaching we've been doing um, on uh, the supernatural church. And, um, you know, using, uh, obviously, when you do that, you can't um, circumvent going to the book of Acts um, and looking through there because that is the church, the young church in action. I believe that's what Phillips calls it. He calls the book of Acts the young church in action. Something like that. Instead of calling it the book of Acts, he calls it the, the young church in action. Um, I like, now I personally like Phillips' stuff. Um, I gained more appreciation for his translation after reading um, some of his book, one of his books he did on, on his translation. In other words, the, the way he translated it and why he did it the way he did it. I gained a much more deeper appreciation for his uh, translation of of the New Testament, and um, so it, it's it's um, whatever. Hallelujah. Let's look. You now we talked about last week. If y'all remember last week, we kind of got into the, that the supernatural church will include judgment. Remember that last week? Yeah, y'all seem like y'all thrill about that one. Uh, I did. I didn't get a whole lot of amens out of that one. But what we do know is that the young church, I mean, that, that judgment in the church brought people into the church. It grew. When judgment came, the church grew. Why? Because people were, were aware that God wasn't putting up with junk. That it was, it was a pure place. It was a, it was a righteous place. It was a place where um, in, in, in actuality was really a safe harbor for those who wholeheartedly were seeking after God. They weren't going to encounter some Mickey Mouse mess. Oh, I, did I just do an alliteration? <laughs> Mickey Mouse mess? Isn't that what you call that? <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. But let's move on. I think we had, we had that kind of finished up with um, oh, what do we call that? Um, Ananias and Sapphira. <coughs> and um, we did, we did kind of dive into Acts 6 a little bit. But uh, looking over, that's going over to Acts 6. We'll kind of breeze through there again. Picking up uh, down, oh, not 6, 8. Chapter 8, chapter 8, I'm sorry. Yeah, 6 is talking about Stephen being stoned. Okay. Let's just pick up in verse 1 here. And Saul was consenting unto his death, that is Stephen's death. And at that time there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Now let me say something, folks. If you don't think there's persecution against the church today, uh, you're an ostrich. Your head is buried in the sand. There's absolute persecution against the church today. If you don't acquiesce to the um, the LBGTQ agenda, you're you're a terrorist. You're a hater. Um, churches are now doing drag queen, gender affirming things in the churches for the kids. It just the the, the evil that's going on with this. I mean. If you weren't, didn't have a righteous mind and the helmet of salvation, it could blow your mind. All right? Um, we're being persecuted. And if you don't agree with it, you're, you're, they come after you with every bit of venom on the planet they can come after you with. 
is full of hate. You know, the, the diversity crowd. The one that says tolerate everything. Just don't tolerate Christians who don't agree with them. I mean, you'll get spewed upon. Um, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc. Uh, this, this, this thing that happened with Stephen stirred the demon up that was controlling Saul at the time and began to drive him. Remember the Bible says he was consenting unto his death. Um, entering into every house and hailing men and women, com uh, committing them to the prison. Therefore, they were scattered abroad. Listen to this. Went everywhere preaching the word. Church said, oh, you bring the persecution. We're going to get stronger. We're going to spread the word. And then Philip. Now, Philip was not what? Was, what was Philip not? He was not an apostle. He was an evangelist. Philip the evangelist. So all the miracles being wrought in the book of Acts were not committed by or performed by apostles. Here we have an evangelist. Isn't that right? So there we go. Just, let's just destroy that narrative. That, that it was all about the apostles. Because we got an evangelist here. And then he had daughters that prophesied. Amen? So let's just do away with these churchy... The tradition didn't even write the word. Uh, garbage. <laughs> Dunghill stuff. Okay? Because that's what they are. They, and there are, those things are all designed to empty you of a responsibility or even the belief that you can uh, go out and walk in the supernatural. Those narratives were created by the devil to emasculate the church. <coughs> into believing that they could not go out and work miracles. It was just for the apostles. Okay. So then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people, with one accord, gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles, hallelujah, which he did for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. Hallelujah. Now what did this? He was an apostle. No, he preached Christ. He preached the gospel. Amen? Then the people gave heed because they heard and saw the miracles. Now, apparently it looks like here that his ministry lay upon the line, mostly for him, lay upon the lines of casting out devils and healing those who had, who had palsies, cripples. That seems to be the main thrust of the healing deliverance ministry he walked in. Okay, that's how he was gifted. But there was a certain man, and we talked about this last week, you know, uh, called Simon, which beforehand in the same city used sorcery, bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. See, when people are unlearned and don't know, you can seduce them with lying signs and wonders. But when the real shows up, amen, when the real shows up, now, how many have ever gone and gotten a piece of pie and they called it key lime pie? How many have ever had key lime pie from Key, uh, key West? Let me tell you, key lime pie, that's, where, that's why they call it key lime pie, Key West, Florida, Okay. That's, that's where it was in, that's where they created it. Now let me tell you something. Most of what you get, they're called key lime pie. Until you've had the real, you don't know the difference. But once you've had the real stuff, 
take the key off of it. Just call it lime pie. <laughs> okay? Because, oh, no. We went, to, we went to the place that actually, I think, claimed to be the inventor of it. I make you speak in tongues. I am telling you. I mean, mwah. Uh, it's a banny banny. Okay? It's a bien bien. It's Tracy Pell. Uh, it's Guten. Okay? I mean, it's just, it's talk. I don't know how many other countries I can say good in, but there you go. It, let me say it in Southern. Slap your mama good. Okay? Once you've had the real, you might find those that are good and they taste fine, but they're not, you know, this isn't the, the no, nah, this isn't. And here's what happened. They had not ever seen, well, let's say it this way, tasted the real until S Philip came down. And boy, all of a sudden, they're seeing, they're not being bewitched and they're not being seduced. They're seeing the power of God in demonstration and manifestation, and it's causing great joy in the city. And the people a long time had regard to the, him because he bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things of God concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself, I was, man, he said, man, I've been running the snake oil show. This stuff is real. He jumps in. Whoa! <coughs> Hello? And he was baptized, continued with Philip, and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs. See, he knew how he had done it, but he was seeing something that he couldn't copy in the natural through, through sorceries and bewitching. He was watching something that was truly supernatural, but supernatural from God. Because it wasn't for the personal gain of the bewitcher. It's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen. And we, we got off on some stuff the other week, the other week talking along this line about preachers who have a miracle, then they stop, take up an offering. You're prostituting the anointing. You're just, you're just a spiritual pimp. Yeah, that's what I said, Jerry, a spiritual pimp. You're pimping the anointing. Y'all getting kind of quiet. Pastor, that's kind of a rough analogy. It's spot on. Okay? Kind of like that. If, I don't know if y'all have ever seen Meet the Browns, the movie. Your dad is a pimp. There's some preachers that are pimps, spiritual pimps. Because they will, they will use the, uh, somebody getting healed to raise an offering and get a big offering. And I can tell you with great authority, God's not pleased. I said, God's not pleased. Because quite frankly, you're bringing strange fire to the temple. I will. You know, you know I don't pull no punches. <laughs> now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that the, I, I know I covered this last week, but I'm, I'm just, if Dad Hagen could do it, Pastor Ed can do it. You think, well, he just covered that last week. Why is he covering that again? Then you got something else out of it while he was doing it. He knew what he was doing. That's exactly right. <coughs> Heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John. Now listen, folks, you can't tell me in any way, shape, form, fashion, or whatever that Samaria at this point is not born again believers. They've received the word of God. They've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They're saved. So they sent Peter and John down to do what? Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
If they're born again, they got all the Holy Ghost they're going to get. Well, apparently the people at Jerusalem didn't think so. <laughs> yeah, there were Pentecostals up there in Jerusalem. Anyway, <laughs> so they said, oh, wait a second. Oh, the Exposition Church still has not shown up in my feed. That's crazy. I was going to share it. It still hasn't shown up in my feed. All right. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you all do. I was, I, but I can't share it because I wanted to share it. But I'm, I'll just, I'll live without sharing it. Because I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. But anyway, <laughs> listen to this. Who, who were they were come down to pray for them, they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if there is a passage of Scripture that clearly delineates that the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Spirit are not the same thing, this is it. Hello. Now, we can go other places and prove that speaking in tongues is the evidence, but this proves that the new birth and the baptism of the Spirit are not the same gift or not the same thing. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, how could they receive the Holy Ghost? And when you got born again, you got all the Holy Ghost you're going to get, and we know they're born again because they received the Word of God. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And a good Baptist will tell you, when you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, you're, back, you're saved. Isn't that right, Brother Bill? Brother Bill is a good Southern Baptist, B-A-D. Now, B-A-B-D-I-S-T, B-A-B-D-I-S-T, Baptist, Baptist, all right? He's a good Southern Baptist. But here, are you here? They got born again, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and then they got hands laid on them and got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then Simon, when he saw that through laying on the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, to whomsoever I lay my hands, um, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Peter said, Thy money perish with thee. Thou hast thought the gift of God might be purchased with money. Thou hast leaned a lot in a part with this matter, the Logos, Literally, if you study this out and you look through your concordances and you look through Greek word studies, the, the here matter of utterance. This matter of utterance. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Now, we need matter of utterance. Obviously, from all the other evidence we see throughout the book of Acts, <coughs> um, of the five instances where it refers to an initial infilling of the Holy Ghost, initial, and we mean but there are other places where the same group got filled again. They got refilled. But where they were initially filled, of the five Book of Acts experiences, three of them directly state they spoke with tongues. This one insinuates it because there's a matter of utterance. And the fifth is Paul. And we know Paul spoke in tongues because he said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all or all of you put together. When did that happen? When he got hands laid on, he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember, when Ananias came to him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto the end of the way has sent me that I might lay hands upon thee, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, he went to get him saved. No, 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 no. He called him Brother Saul. Saul was saved on the road to Damascus because he said, who art thou, Lord? What would you have me to do? He called him Lord and committed his life to him right there. Amen. Are y'all here? You're going home. So by the time Ananias gets there, you know, uh, remember the Lord appears to Ananias and says, go to, go to here and do this. <coughs> he said, Lord, I've heard of this guy. How he's, you know, how he's persecuted the church, basically, I'm going to paraphrase there. He says, go thy way. He's a chosen vessel unto me. Amen. 
And see, he was the commission was to go lay hands on them that he might receive his sight. Well, by the time he gets there, that, that got carried to another level. And the Lord told him to lay hands on him, he, he might receive his sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Amen. Y'all hear you go home. See, we need to be, we need to be Pentecostal in experience. Hello. Y'all hear you gone home. Who's here? Okay, make sure everybody's here. Anybody gone home? All right. Just want to make sure you knew you were here. I want to make sure that you know you're here. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. So, um, here's this, this is a supernatural church. Miracles and signs and wonders. Demons being cast out. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. We got demons walking around right now and people go going, that's normal. We got parents who are demon possessed who are offering their children on the altar of the LBGT community uh, altar of, uh, of perversion. Take it into family friendly drag shows, drag queen shows. Their children, they're, they're babies. And these pediatricians that are demonized. I just saw an interview recently. I'm a certified pediatrician. Giving the puberty blocking drugs. That is the same drug they use for chemical castration. And they're giving it to children. And you don't think that's perverse? They're offering our children as a sacrifice to their demon gods. Child sacrifice has always been an action of demon-possessed people to their demon gods. They just do it through intellectualism under the guise of health care. And we need a church that can cast devils out. That demons are afraid of us. Are you here? Instead of, act, uh, instead of uh, backing down into the corner and curling up and going, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, Jesus, come quick because there's a mess out there. The Bible did not say he was coming back for an emasculated, wimpy church. He's coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a supernatural church. Amen. <coughs> He's coming back for a power church. He's coming back for the blood-bought church. Amen. And as Dean Tad said last uh, two weeks ago, <coughs> oh. excuse me, in, in, the, in, in uh, um, um, whatever they call the first week of school, Orientation. We have no right to preach a cessationist gospel. We don't have a right to preach that. Because this church was born in power. This church exists in power. And this church is going to finish in power. Glory to God. So get your backside out there and get after it. Was that too strong? All right. I'm offended. Get unoffended. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to put one on you. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall by any means offend them. Yeah. But I want to be offended. Yeah, you can't be offended. That's right. Get over yourself. There's a world dying and going to hell out there. And it's, 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 it's yearning and it's craving. The whole creation yearns and yearns and yearns for the manifestations of the sons of God. Where are they? Where is this army? We're rising up. 
I said, we're rising up. You see, there's, 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 been, a, there's been a people, and there's been a remnant who, who sat and watched all the cute stuff, who watched all the, the placating of people's of, of emotions and watched all the cool things and watched all the people flock to this and still not have their needs met. But there's been a people who would not bow down, who would not bow their knee at the altar of convenience and at the altar of looking cool and at the altar of being popular, who's, who've been waiting and waiting for the opportunity to come into the earth for such a time as this, to walk forth as that mighty army that Dad Hagen prophesied about, uh, you know, the tramp, tramp, tramp. This mighty army that's coming with this message. This mighty army that's coming in authority. This mighty army that's coming in power. And there are those who say, but I'm too old. And there are those who say, I've been on the shelf too long. But the Lord says that, you know, there's a renewing of your strength. The Lord says that there are Caleb's and Joshua's in the land who will rise up and take their mountains and defeat the giants and go forth and see the fulfillment of the promise of God in the earth. Amen. 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 We need some running room. And we don't have to open the door and open the back door and let you run out the side and run around the building and come back in. Just saying. Hallelujah. Wait a second. Expedition Church showed up on my feed somewhere else. Didn't show up where it's supposed to, but I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it now. Hallelujah. Post it. Glory to God. Amen. It's out there now. Yeah. We'll hear it again. It's good. Yeah. Say it again. I will. Hallelujah. We have been called to walk as this early church did in the anointing of God. This is our pattern. Skinny jeans and bedhead is not your pattern. Coolness is not your pattern. The anointing is your pattern. The supernatural is your pattern. The word of God being preached with authority is your pattern. And it's time that we rise up and say enough of this foolishness and get out there and get about the Father's business. Amen. 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 Verse 26 of chapter 8. Philip and Peter and John have come down getting them filled with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Philip's part is done. And so the Spirit of God, in verse 26, spake and said, Arise, go toward the south unto the way that goeth down unto Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is a desert. And he arose and went. And he what? Can you? I've heard people say, well, I can't go to a small church. I have to maximize my ministry. Well, I'm going to follow the book of Acts. Because God took Philip out of the middle of a citywide revival. And sent him to the desert, the one dude. Now, obviously, this one dude is strategic. But don't tell me I can't go to this little church because, it, you know, I have to maximize my ministry. No, what you're telling me is you have to maximize your offerings. And let's just stop. Let's just stop with the junk. Hello. Thank God for all the different gifts, and thank God for their place. But the traveling teaching ministry is not more important than the local church. As a matter of fact, the traveling teaching ministry should be supporting with everything they got the local church. Amen. Amen. And I love, listen, there's a lot of teachers, I love them. I love their ministries. But it is not about you having a huge ministry with huge amounts of money and you just living uh, high on the hog. Amen. 
so much so you can't go to a small church. What if God wants, you know, now there was a day when back when you were young and you were small, you didn't have a big ministry, you'd go to a church of 10 people just to have a place to preach. Well, if you've arrived where you can't go back there, you've arrived in the wrong location. Amen. Y'all hear you going home. And so, um, go that way down from Jerusalem. To, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know if I got too much dust in my throat today from weed eating out there and getting. No, no. I had to go home and take a bath again. I had, I had stuff all in my head. I had gravel and everything up there, and the weed eater throwing stuff up. I was, I was, I was nasty. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he arose and went, behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. That was terrible. Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning. Sitting upon his chariot and read Isaiah, that's Isaiah. The pro that's just the Greek rendering of the, he of the Hebrew, okay? That's the way the Greeks would spell Isaiah, was Isaiah. <coughs> um, Isaiah's the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him. Don't you love he ran thither? He didn't run over to him, he ran thither to him. And he heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, how can, I, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Get up, come up here and sit with me. The place of Scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In humiliation his judgment was taken away. And who shall, who shall, question church, who shall declare his generation. You. You are the declarers. For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, uh, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? And then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. They went both down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Now, people try to say, God blinded the eyes of the, of the eunuch and he didn't see Philip. He said he caught him away. Yeah. It didn't say. People just, they're always trying to do away with the supernatural or make it less supernatural. Y'all hear you going home. Always trying. And I say, stop it. You don't believe in the supernatural? You unbelieving believer? You need the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he saw him no more. And he went his way rejoicing. He's like, oh, well. <laughs> He's like, okay. This dude shows up in the middle of the desert, preaches to me. I get saved, get water baptized. He disappears. Okay. <laughs> Woo, I got Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He don't know if he saw an angel, don't know if he saw a ghost. He don't, he don't care. He got Jesus. Whatever it was, I got Jesus. So he's gone off his little merry way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azatos, Azatos, 30, 20, 20, um, it's like 27 point something miles away. So 30 miles away. Hello? And passing through, he preached in all the cities. 
So he came to Caesarea. Wow. Now, Brother Hagin prophesied back in the back about 40 years ago, 50 years ago, that there'd be a preacher on television in Los Angeles, and a preacher on television in Dallas, and a preacher somewhere else, and they would all disappear and be somewhere else on live television. <coughs> I don't believe that. That's your problem, stupid. You don't believe in the supernatural. And if you ain't figured out yet, it's going to take a supernatural church to reach this world. Janice, some of your kinfolk calling? Well, that's Reedsville. That's, that's, that's Reedsville. That's got to be some of your kinfolk. <laughs> Y'all trying to reach Janice? <laughs> I just couldn't pass that one up. That was good, won't it? Yeah, yeah. All right. So Philip, Philip goes down, has a citywide revival. God sends Peter and John. They start getting baptized. And he goes, then the, all right, okay, Philip, I got something else for you to do. He goes out in the desert and gets this one dude saved, one and gets to have the first Star Trek experience <laughs> that stayed on earth. Now, Elijah got to have that, but he didn't stay. He took off and went. Okay? So Philip had the first one when he was translocated from one place to another on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what did he do when he got to the next city? He preached. Notice what Philip does everywhere he goes. He's just doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's preaching. No matter how he got there, no matter how many or how few, he's just doing his job. Yeah, there you go. Holy Ghost air. Now we do have um, testimonies of people who who woke up in the middle of the night and thought they had a dream, but they had their pants on and sand in their legs. They had been in another country preaching. They just thought it was a dream until they got up and found this, they had their clothes on and there was sand in the cuffs of their pants. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. I mean, it, you're talking about free airfare? Now, listen, we're having, God's doing some stuff in the earth. You're not going to hear it on our national media here. Like when Jesse shared, she, I'm, probably, I'm sure she shared this, about the pastors from that certain country showed up at that certain meeting. And most of them got saved because Jesus appeared to them. How would you like to be going, walk along in your happy little Muslim world? And Jesus shows up and says, I'm the Son of God. Hello? Hello? But see, they're, they're unlearned. They don't, have any, they don't have anybody to teach them. So they're hungry. They're hungry. They're hungry to be taught to be, so they can be effective pastors. They just know they love the Lord. They know, they know He's real. They're like Paul. They got knocked off the horse. They hated Christians. And then Jesus shows up. Next thing you know, they're, they're out preaching. Uh, let's see here. Acts 9, verse 33. Y'all enjoy this? May have to do a teaching. And we've done this before. May have to do it again on the miracles and the ministry of Jesus. I'm just trying to. Yeah, this is this is after Paul has his has his Damascus Road experience. Ananias has come in. Um, Saul's gone out and started preaching, and then um, Barnabas takes Saul under his wings. Okay, 
and declared how the, he had seen the Lord in the way and spoken to him. And uh, he was going in and out with them at Jerusalem. And he spoke, and he both spoke boldly in the name of Jesus and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about the, but they went about to slay him. They were trying to kill him because they, they were scared of him. Barmas is defending him, saying, hey, look, this guy, this is, this is real, dude. Okay? Um, verse 32, then it came to pass, um, as Peter passed through the, all the quarters, he came down into the saints that dwelt at Lydia, and there found a certain man named uh, Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise, make thy bed, and he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydia and, and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. <coughs> We don't need intelligent faith. I've said it before. I'll say it again. The shroud of Turin ain't going to do doodly squat and getting somebody to get saved. Besides all the different things that's happened with that particular church and from that particular city in deceiving people over the centuries with false lines, signs and wonders, Everybody can, well, carbon dating shows. I don't care. The Bible does not so go out and share the Shroud of Turin. It's the burial cloth of Jesus. And I've heard people, you know, and I, I mean, I would, I'd love to go to Jerusalem and, you know, and there's, there's two different tombs, by the way. One's that the Protestants believe, one that the, um, uh, um, Orthodox Church believes that Jesus was Jesus' tombs. They debate over which one's real. Okay? I don't care. Because he ain't there. Hello? I don't need to go to the tomb to find him. I've already got him. Hello? Hello? I mean, for history-wise, that that's cool. I get it. But that is not what's going to convert and turn people's hearts. All right. Um, now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom they had uh, washed, and they laid her in the upper chamber, for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and, and the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Peter rose and went with them, and when he come down, they brought into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. And But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning to the body said, Tabitha, arise. <laughs> now we got them raising the dead. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up and gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he called his saints, the widows presented her alive, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. So here we got miracles and healings bringing people to the Lord. We have the dead being raised bringing people to the Lord. And we think we're supposed to do it through intelligent faith. We're supposed to somehow um, be more intellectually advanced than this bunch of dummies. You know, the ones that they took note of them, that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. Hello. You see, the intellect, intellectualism will destroy the supernatural. We need the supernatural. We need signs and wonders. And let me tell you something. The supernatural is cross-generational. You're going to hear that term out of me a lot now. Because I'm, I'm done with the narrative that, you know, we got to reach gen whatever. And forget about everything else. Because we got a new letter on the alphabet that we have that generation functioning now. I don't know what we're going to do now that we're at Gen Z. 
Gen Z plus one, uh, Gen Z plus two. I don't know. Because, you know, we, were, we went from, uh, what, Generation X? What was it, Gen X? Is that what it was? Before millennials? There was baby boomers. There was something else. There was Gen X, millennials, Gen Z. Okay? Um, what are we going to do now? We don't have, we don't, we're, we're at the end of the alphabet. Thank you, Brother Bill. Gen Alpha. Gen Zeta. You know? Gen Omega. Gen Omega Sci-Fi. Omega Sci-Fi. <laughs> now, see, you got to, you got to know what sci Omega Sci-Fi is. What is it, Jerry? It's an African-American fraternity in, on our colleges. And, and listen. I'll be honest, I used, to pick, I used to cater East Carolina's Omega Sci-Fi chapter. Those were good dudes. They were great guys. You know, I love going. I enjoy catering them more than the stiff white folk. They were fun. Okay? And at least one of them that was in that East Carolina chapter, I didn't know it at the time, was a brother of a girl I graduated from, in Aiden Griffin. He was four years behind us. He's, he's Bishop McCarter over in uh, Winston-Salem at Cleveland uh, Avenue uh, Baptist Church, Bishop McCarter over there. He, he was in that chapter that I used to cater those parties. Okay? So I, they were good guys. All right? <laughs> so I just, I could, but they used to do this little thing with, you know, Omega Sci. Uh, they had this little dance, shuffle dance they did. I thought, these guys are cool. <laughs> and they like Parker's Barbecue. Let's let me tell you. <laughs> and fried chicken. Mm. Yes, Lord. Guess what's coming up the last Sunday of October? I'm just making the announcement. Um, and it came to pass, they tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a Tanner. All right. Now, let me see here. Um, we'll hold off. All right, so, and I'm just going through, I'm just showing you the, the, the church. Notice what keeps happening when the supernatural takes place. People get saved. People get saved. There is a longing in the hearts of man to come in contact with the supernatural. And that's why some people will sell their soul to the devil because they long for the supernatural because they know there's more than the natural. And the church has put a lid on the supernatural so you can't go get it in the church. So they go where they can get it. They go to the devil. Now, you'll hear these terms. I've heard these terms in the past. They're a witch, but they operate in white energy. I don't give a rip if it's white, black, um, Barney, purple, or baby bop, yellow. If it's witchcraft, it's witchcraft. And it's an abomination. Uh, there's one there's one scripture I forget exactly what it says. It says something is as a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. God has no no likeness or no light, no liking of witchcraft. Oh they walk in white energy. No. They walk in devils. They're spiritual. No, they're possessed. I'm possessed by the Holy Ghost. I'm possessed of a spirit. The Holy Ghost. Amen. He governs and controls, and, and, and my life is yielded to him. <coughs> Amen. I'll never forget T.L. Osborne. He was on the 700 Club oh, 40 years ago, plus. He's on there with Pat Robinson. And Brother Osborne would say, make statements that would, you know, 
I mean, absolutely blow the person's mind that was sitting there. And Brother Roberts, Brother Roberts was sitting there, um, Pat Robertson was sitting there, and he, and he um, makes some, some statement about, you know, reincarnation, negative. And T.L. goes, I believe in reincarnation. <laughs> and Pat Robinson's just like flabbergasted. You do? Yes. That's the gospel. Christ being reincarnated in us. <laughs> he got the point across. <laughs> Have you ever heard T.L. Osborne, I mean, old tapes or anything? Uh, I got to, I got to be sitting under him several times in person. Love, Brother Osborne. I'm telling you what a ministry. He'd come along and go, God loves you. You know, you're special. You were created. Say, wow. Say it backwards. <laughs> he taught himself French and English, I mean French and Spanish, because he said by, by speaking English, French, and Spanish, he could communicate with 90% of the world's population. He was doing the mass crusades before mass crusades were, pop, were pop, popular. He was on the mission field for so long that when he came back into the Americas in the 80s, people, when they, he introduced himself, they said, I thought you were dead. Because he had been in the bush. Special man. Special man. Uh, Brother Osborne was, was, a, was a, I mean, he was a trailblazer. God loves you. He made you special. You know, he was, he was, um, now here, let, me, let me say something. And this is going to tie right into this. We're going to close here for today. He, um, here's Pentecostal holiness. As was Brother Roberts. I don't know if y'all knew that. Brother Oral Roberts was Pentecostal holiness. And he, God told him to build a university, and they wouldn't do it, so he went to the United Methodist Church because they supported his university. Then they let him preach whatever he wanted to preach. But um, Brother Roberts was a Pentecostal holiness, and T.L. Osborne was Pentecostal holiness. And um, Brother Osborne went to India as a missionary, and he preached. He said, and I preached. And he said, I gave the altar call, no one came. He said, but this is the word of God. And they held, he said, and they held up their Quran. And they said, no, this is the word of God. He said, mine is leather with gold edges. He said, ours is leather with gold edges. And he came back to America, a young missionary, completely defeated, completely depressed, as a failure. He said, I was laying on my floor in Oklahoma City crying out to God because I had failed him. Think about the heart of people who want to obey, obey God and when they don't accomplish what they know God wants done, they're, they're sorry. They're apologetic. They failed. They failed their master. They failed their God. And he said it as I lay in the floor of my living room, Jesus appeared to me. And he said he didn't say a word. He just looked at me. And he said, I knew in that moment why I failed. Because I preached a theological Jesus and not a resurrected Jesus. And I went back to that same place and began to preach the resurrected Jesus who still heals, who still works miracles, who still works signs and still works wonders. And they had revival breakout. <coughs> Hallelujah. And the course of his ministry never changed, never stopped. He was having crusades, open air crusades of 50,000 people before Reinhardt Monkey was born. Hello. He piling up the, the crutches 
and the uh, implements for the handicapped and having a bonfire because so many people have gotten healed. And Jesus taught him. He said, Master, he said Lord, I can't, I can't go lay hands on all these people. And he taught him how to pray over the masses and have them be healed. And you can go in those countries today and it's still like he is, you know, Jesus had come to their village. He's still known. Even though he's going to be with the Lord. He has a great book, Healing the Sick. Used to, actually, it used to be called Healing the Sick and Casting Out Devils, and they abridged it to just Healing the Sick. He's got, he's got good, there's some good stuff out there. Loved God. But his heart was to, it was to, was to honor the Master. And as his heart cried out, Jesus appeared, and he knew the mistake. And so he went back in that same village. And the Muslims came out. And the Hindus came out. Now, you know, the Hindus, they believe that, you know, Uncle Charlie is reincarnated as a cow. That's why the term holy cow comes from. Because you keep coming back in a different life form until you achieve this, this state, this higher state. And there was a woman who was bow-backed. You, know, you ever seen anybody's bow-backed? In other words, when, when they're walking, instead of being upright, they're leaned backwards. In some cases, so severe, they walk on their hands like an arch. And this woman was severely bow-backed, and he challenged them. He said, you say Muhammad is God? Come pray for her in the name of Muhammad that she be healed. <laughs> See, he's coming with the resurrected Jesus. He knows where he is from now. And they came and prayed for her, and they didn't, nothing happened. He said, I declare to you that Jesus is God. And that if this woman's not healed, I'm a false prophet. And he lays hands on her. She gets crack, snack, snap, crackle, pop, healed, stands up straight. And they're, all, they're just all cheering and rejoicing and talking that Jesus is God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thomas, you remember doubting Thomas? He gets a bad rap, by the way. Because see, doubting Thomas became miracle worker Thomas. Did y'all know that? See, Thomas, after the Lord got him snatched the slack out of him, <laughs> he went, <coughs> went down into Africa and went to a village where people, the, the people, they would go out in the river when the sun was daylight and they would just throw the water up in the air and they wish, worship the rainbow crystals that appeared from the, from the spray. And he declared unto them that his God was greater than their God. And as they were splashing that, he commanded the water to stand still, and it froze in the air. They got saved. Africa was evangelized by the second century A.D. But then darkness comes. The Muslims come. Now, I know some of y'all may love Hall and Mark Channel, Hall and Mark Channel. But now we got all this, you know, political correct stuff. And now they got the something girls or whatever they are going on there. And you know what they're doing in it? Ancestral worship. The ancestors brought me here. They're running the commercials. It's so subtle. I don't know why I came to here and whatever. But we don't know why the ancestors. That's the see, what you don't know is that the religion of Africa, after, after whatever reason, you know, they, they left the gospel because nobody apparently, you know, that's how the devil works, reverted back to ancestral worship. See, when Ed Elliott went to Africa, I'm trying to finish up. Are y'all enjoying this? Because I feel like y'all are pulling on this. When Ed Elliott went to Africa, y'all don't know who he is, but I, he used to come to our church a lot. Um, they would say, no, we're not Muslim. We, used to, we do ancestral worship. What they did was they would go 
to the graves of ancestors and put sticks in the ground and dig holes, and then, you know, the ancestors come out and they're worshiping them. The ancestors, um, ancestors spoke to them. They're called demons. But now Hallmark has got, you know, they got that um, mahogany sub whatever on their network, and it's, it's primarily people of color movies. Okay? And they got a new one coming out. These two girls that were twins back with Disney years ago, um, I forgot who they were, but they're, they're in these movies. There's one of these movies. And in this one, one of them is in there. And they talk about the ancestors. So all we're doing is, see, the political, the wokeness, the political correctness, you know, the white man's religion. We're trying to, the devil's trying to draw people down just because of their race to hell. By saying, you don't need that white man's religion. Your religion is ancestral worship. And they're presenting that in a very sly and subtle manner. Well, where, is the, where are the miracle workers going to be? Where's the supernatural going to be? Because we're combating forces of darkness. Don't tell me that normal people accept all the stuff that's going on in the realm of perversion in our country. But it's in our school systems. It's in our universities. It's in elementary school. And you're called this and you're called that. Something's going on that's driving this and making what, and, and then normal people going, well, I mean, we, we have to, uh, here's one of the lines that's being used by pediatricians and child psychologists. When your um, son comes and says he's a girl and he wants to kill himself because he's a, he's a woman locked up in a male body. And they go to the parents and say, would you, have a, would, would you rather have a living daughter or a dead son? Then we need to start doing this therapy so that you could have a living daughter. And the parents are falling for it. Hello. This is, that's evil. That is an evil spirit. And these people have given themselves. Why do they want to do this? Because they get filthy rich doing these surgeries and prescribing these drugs. And by being well, being known across the country as the doctor that will do this, it's M-O-N-E-Y. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, just pure absolute evil on their part. So I say there must be a church. There must be a church that rises and puts the fear of God in evil where they tremble in their boots. As the words of the Lord go out, what is that sound? Tramp, tramp, tramp. How many of you have ever heard Brother Hagin's prophecy? The arm. We need, we, need, we need to play that again. What is that sound? It's the sound of many voices going for, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it'll put chills up. I mean, you think John Travolta had chills that were multiplying? You hear this. Come on, guys, Greece reference. You didn't see that when y'all were young, Dick? Yeah. You didn't see Greece? Bill, you didn't see Greece? Oh, you were, you were a, what were you? Okay. I got chills. I'm multiplying. Dick didn't, you didn't see Greece? Oh, that's right. You're, you're older. Yeah, you, you missed Saturday Night Fever, all that. Yeah, because you didn't like disco. Not so much. The lighted dance floors with the disco ball, yeah? You, you, you wouldn't even believe your pastor if you saw him back then. Anyway, two-tone platform shoes, elephant leg bell bottoms, elephant legs, silk print shirts. Couldn't cut a rug because it wasn't a rug. It was a slick, lighted dance floor. You think, I bet I look like a fool.
Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So next week we'll, we'll probably finish up along, along this lines. And uh, <coughs> we're the Supernatural Church. If you need a, anybody, if you're going to give, go ahead and ring up your electronic giving. Father, we pray over the, the tithers and the givers. Uh, if you're going to give with uh, cash or uh, a check, uh, just go see Brother Joe with it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we bless you as you give. Thank you for your faithfulness to the, to, uh, to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We love you. I know we went late tonight, but, you know, as the French would say, c'est tout bon. Tous les temps. Hallelujah. It's all good all the time. Hallelujah. Uh, or even actually say this, Dieu est bon, tous les temps. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Praise the Lord. We love you. Thank you for joining us. Be with us this Sunday at uh, 1030 a.m. here at 6302 Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. You might go, Pleasant Garden? That's up. It's not out there in the boonies. We're 4.3 miles from the Elm Eugene exit, exit 124 off of Interstate 85. It is not that far. And you can get around, and, and in three, about six months, you'll be able to drive around the loop from anywhere in Greensboro and get over here. Hallelujah. It's, it's going to be completed. And, um, you know, and uh, let, like one guy said, a church alive is worth the drive. So come on out and be with us at faith, uh, uh, in, in, in a place of faith, in a place of victory, where we're living a life of victory, forged by faith, Expedition Church of the Triad. God bless you. We love you. Hope to see you soon. Good night.